Hey guys, today I'll be showing you how to recreate this glitch animation in Adobe Photoshop so that you can apply it to your own text or logo and then export the animation to use it in your social media. Before we start, I just want to thank our friends at Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers over 16,000 premium classes on a huge variety of topics, ranging anywhere from creativity and design to lifestyle and technology, just to name a few. I've personally been using Skillshare for a few months now, and I learned so much just from the amount and quality of the information on the platform. So if you're like me and you're always pushing to become a better designer by learning new skills and techniques, you should definitely try it out. Right now, Skillshare is giving away two free months of premium membership to the first 100 people that click the link in the video description. So make sure to check that out and get your free two month membership. All right, let's get started. So we'll create a new Photoshop document. I'll make this one 1000 by 1000 pixels, which is more than enough for a social media post. I'll be posting this one on Instagram. So if you guys want to check that out or the other stuff I post on there, make sure to follow me. I'll leave a link in the video description. All right, so we can just leave the resolution at 72 DPI and hit OK. Now we're going to set the background color to black by pressing Shift and Backspace or Shift and F5 on PC. Now this is going to bring up the fill menu and up here we can select black as the fill color and hit OK. Then we'll double click on the background to make it a layer and I'll just rename it to background. Next, we'll add a bit of static to the background. So we'll just duplicate this black layer by keeping Alt pressed and dragging this guy up. Then go to filter and noise and then add noise. Now you can set the amount to about 200 and just make sure to uncheck monochromatic and check uniform and then hit OK. Then we'll go back to filter, blur and select motion blur. You can set the angle to zero and the distance to 20 pixels and hit OK. Now let's go to the layer palette and we'll set the blending mode to hard light. If you want, you can stretch this layer horizontally to make the glitch lines wider by pressing Command and T or Control T on PC and then stretching it by keeping Alt pressed. And then I'm just going to rename this layer to static. OK, now we can type in our text. So I'm just going to bring up the type tool by pressing T and then type in the word glitch. The font I'll be using is called DIN Condensed, but you can use any font you want for this. All right, now let's go ahead and resize our text by pressing Command T to bring up the Transform tool. And then we'll resize the type holding down Alt and Shift to make sure that we scale everything proportionally. Then we can center it using these smart guides. Now I'm just going to go ahead and make this text white to make it stand out on the dark background. So now that we have our base text, we're going to create the different frames we need for this animation. Since it's a pretty basic and quick animation, we're only going to need two frames. The first frame being the plain white text, and the second is going to be our glitch text. So this original text layer will be the first frame. So I'm going to go ahead and name it frame one. Next, we'll duplicate the text layer by keeping Alt pressed and dragging this layer down until you see this little line appear between both layers. And then hide the first frame by clicking the little eye. This is going to be our base text for the second frame, so I'll rename it frame two. Now what we want to do is move chunks of this text around to get that glitched effect. To do this, we're going to have to rasterize the text by right clicking on the layer and select rasterize type. Now keep in mind that rasterizing the layer will transform the text into an image and it won't be editable from this point on. So you won't be able to go back and change the word after doing this. If you do want to go back and edit your text, you can always go to your first frame and change it to whatever you want and then duplicate it and retrace the steps. So this first frame is going to be our backup. All right, so now we're going to start selecting chunks of the text and moving them around to get this kind of deformation effect. So we'll bring up the rectangular marquee tool by pressing M and then we'll select certain parts of our text and nudge them horizontally. I'll start by selecting this part here. Now, if I press the left and right arrows on my keyboard, you'll see that only the selection box is moving. So I'll go ahead and hold command or control on PC. And now when I hit my left or right arrow keys, you can see that chunks of my text are now selected. 
So now we can nudge them to the right, but they're only moving one pixel at a time. So to move them faster, you can hold shift while pressing the arrow keys, which allows you to move 10 pixels at a time and be much more efficient. Now I can press Command D or Control D on PC to deselect everything. So I'm going to keep moving parts around by repeating the same process and selecting different areas of my text and displacing them. Try and have some variation in your selection so it looks random and more natural. So you can make some super wide selections and then some really narrow ones. Alright, so I'll just speed this part up a little bit so you guys can see the whole process. Alright, so this looks pretty good. Now, I'd like to push the effect a bit further and give it this old CRT monitor glitch style. So I'll create an RGB split, which is essentially what happens when there's a shift between the red, green, and blue colors that are used to make up an image on a monitor. So we're gonna go ahead and duplicate this layer by keeping Alt pressed and dragging it down to make a copy. Then we'll bring up the Move tool by pressing V and nudge the layer 10 pixels to the right by pressing Shift and the right arrow key. Now this is gonna be a red color split, so let's go ahead and rename it to red. Then we'll select the content of the layer by keeping Command pressed or Control on PC, and then clicking right on this little layer thumbnail. Now you can see that the entire shape of the layer is now selected. All right, so now we'll bring up the Fill menu by hitting Shift and Backspace, and then go ahead and select a color. For the red, I'll be using the hex value FF0000, so FF and then four zeros, and then hit OK. And deselect everything by pressing Command D or Control D on PC. And now we can bring the layer opacity down to 85%. Then we'll make it look a bit more natural by adding some motion blur. So you can go to Filter and then Blur and select Motion Blur and set the angle to 0 and the distance to 30 pixels and then hit OK. So now that we have our red layer done, we can go ahead and duplicate our layer once again and make it blue. So again, keep Alt pressed and drag it down. And let's rename it to blue. Alright, so this time we'll move it to the left, so hold Shift and hit the left arrow. Now let's change the color to blue, so command click on the layer thumbnail to select the content and then bring up the fill menu with shift and backspace. Now the hex I'll be using for the blue is 00B4FF. Alright, so hit command D to deselect and this time we'll bring the opacity down to 75%. Again, go to Filter and then select Motion Blur up here. This is going to reapply the same blur that we used on our red layer. Alright, now let's duplicate this layer one last time and this time we'll name it Green. This time we'll place it a bit below our text, so just hit the down arrow a few times to bring it down. Then hit Command click on the thumbnail and hit Shift and Backspace to bring up the Fill menu and set the color to 00 FF9C. And deselect everything and again go back to Filter and select Motion Blur. Now I'm just going to move the layer back up a few notches. Alright, let's do one last thing before we start the animation. So let's select our Frame 2 layer, so the white text, and add a little bit of blur to it. So we'll go to Filter and then Blur and Gaussian Blur. Now we'll set the radius to 1.5 pixels and hit enter. 
Now let's group these layers together. So select the five layers that are between the frame one and the background layer by holding shift. And then press command G or control G on PC to group them together. And I'll just name this group frame two. All right, so now we have all the elements we need to start creating the animation. So there's frame one and then frame two. So we'll go up to window and select timeline. Now, as you can see, we have a timeline tab that just popped at the bottom. So we're gonna go ahead and create a video timeline. Now, the first thing we wanna do is click on these three squares on the bottom left to transform the timeline to a frame animation. And one last thing before we start animating, just go to this menu right here and make sure that create new layer for each new frame is unchecked or else it'll just create a bunch of unnecessary layers and it gets really annoying. All right, let's make our first frame. So go to your layer palette and make sure only frame one is visible and uncheck frame two. So down here, this is gonna be our first frame. Now, if you click right here, you can set the delay time for this specific frame. So this is how long the frame is gonna last in the animation. I'm just gonna set this one to one second. Next, let's just duplicate this frame by clicking on this little frame icon. Now this is gonna be our second frame. So let's go back to the layer palette and make the second frame visible and hide the first one. Then I'm gonna set the timing for this guy to no delay. Now, if you look down here, you can choose the number of times you want your animation to loop. I'm gonna set it to forever, so it's just gonna loop over and over. Now, if I hit this play button, I can get a preview of my animation. So you can see we already have a glitch effect going on, but it's pretty subtle since it only lasts a fraction of a second. So we'll stretch it out a little. To do this, we're gonna select both frames by holding down Command or Control on PC, and then we'll click on this little tween animation icon. Now you can leave all of this as is, and then where it says frames to add, set it to one and hit okay. Now you can see it created a new transition frame between both original frames. So let's set the timing to no delay. Now we're gonna take this transition frame and move it to the end of the animation. All right, so let's preview the animation and see what it looks like. You can mess around with the timing and see what you like best, but I think this looks pretty good. So now we can select all three frames by holding down shift and then duplicate them all by pressing alt and then dragging them at the end. The number of times you'll repeat this process will determine how many times the animation will loop once we export it. So I'll go ahead and make it loop five times. All right, now all we have to do is export the animation. So we'll go to file, export, and then render video. Now you can leave everything as is and name it whatever you want, and then hit render. So now you have a looped animated glitch effect that you can upload wherever you want. If you do upload yours to Instagram, make sure to tag me because I'd love to see what you guys did with this. All right, guys, once again, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.